now it's time for me to show you how i was able to make a cut together color and color stand for the shirt that i created on this channel and all the steps i'm about to show you here it's a beginner step so if you pay very close attention to everything i'm doing you would be able to make one for yourself So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is grab my shirt and I am just going to measure my neckline. Okay, so the width of my neckline is what I'm about to measure and I'll show you exactly how I do this. So grab your tape, grab your shirt and then let's measure like this. Okay, so I'm going to start off from one side of the neckline and then I'll calculate gently or carefully to the other side. So I'm starting from the left and then I'll stop on the right. The width I got as the neckline is 15.75 and this is what I'm going to be using to draft out my collar, okay? So please pay attention to the next step. Of course, we're going to be drafting out a pattern before we cut out the collar and to do this, I'm using my interfacing. I did not want to use a pattern paper first and then duplicate on an interfacing. I just decided to do it directly, okay? So what I have here on my interfacing is more than 20 inches. I'm just going to fold this into two, okay? So the color we're going to be cutting, we need to fold our either pattern paper or interface interfacing into two, okay? So you have a close edge on one side and then you have an open edge on one side. So you can see my close edge here and then my open edge on the other side. So this is close and this is open. So from the close edge, I'm just going to divide the 15.75 I got as the width on my shirt, the neckline. I'll just divide it into two and then I got 7.85. This is what I'm going to be placing from the close edge of my interface to the open edge side. And I'm just going to mark that point. This is very necessary, okay? Make sure you divide the neckline you got on your shirt divide the measurements by two and mark this either on your pattern paper or on your interfacing just as i am doing you can also do this on your fabric but you really need to be careful and you really need to pay attention and make sure you understand before you take this and you know draft that on your fabric directly so you saw what i did there i had to pin this so it does not move we need everything to be accurate okay so i'm gonna just rule a line on that marking i made okay the marking i made where i marked my round neck which is what i got on my shirt you know i divided it into two and i marked it right I, so what i just did now is rule a line so where i have the close edge that's going to be my b which is for the back neckline that is where the back is going to be sitting and the front is just going to be sitting here you know the collar is going to be closed at the back and because the front is open the color too needs to be open on the front okay so that's what we're doing now on the front i'm going i'm going to mark one inch upwards where i have my f which is the front i'm marking one inch upwards and i'll just label that as my f2 because the down here is f1 so from the back i'll place my tape and i'll divide this line here into two to get the middle point so from the back close edge i just place my tape I want to know the middle point of this particular um, line. So from point B to point F, I want to know the middle point. That is going to be my center um, line. Okay, my middle point, my center line. <laughs> Whatever you want to label it. So, but this is just going to be my center. Okay, I just call it C. So from C, I'm going to connect C to my F2. So you know my F2 is the one inch I came up from, from the F1. So I am connecting it to my C. Okay, one inch connected to the middle point. And what I just did here is show you that you can do this with a straight ruler or you can do this with your curve ruler. I went ahead to do this with my curve ruler because I don't know. I just wanted all my points to be curvy but not too curvy. Yeah, so I just want all the points on my color stands to be curvy, but not to curvy. And there's always room for adjustment. And the next thing I'm going to do is mark the length of the color stand. And the length for my color stand is going to be one inch. And you can see how I'm indicating that we need to mark one inch on all points. 
So you don't have to use one inch for your color stand. Baby girl, you can do 1.5. You can do two. See, it is your dress, right? So you can do whatever you want to do. But yeah, I am using one inch for the length of my own color stand. And you can see how I am taking my time to indicate the one inch on all points. Okay, following all lines. That's my baseline, following them and, you know, marking my one inch upwards. Now I'll connect all points to get my color stand. And you guys are going to see the result that this will automatically create. This is like a really beginner step of making a cut together um, color stand. So please pay attention. Now the next thing I'm going to do is close this point. This is where the front color is going to be sitting, the color stand. So this is where the front is going to be sitting and I'll just close this up like this. Now, most people like to leave it square and most people like to create a shape. So at this point, it is optional for you to create whatever shape you want to create. It doesn't really matter. Okay. So this is my color stand. And we're going to go ahead and create the color on the color stand because this is a cut together color and color stand. So now let's create the color. For us to create the color, all we have to do is mark up two inches from the color stand and that will automatically create the color. Okay. And I'll show you, of course. <laughs> We're drafting this together. So of course I'll carry along. Now I'm going to be marking two inches, of course, on my color stand to go up to mark my color and make sure you mark it on all points. Okay. Do not just mark at the end and go to another end and no follow all because this is curvy. We don't have a straight line here. So this is a curvy line. So we have to follow the curve and mark two inches upwards. Just as I am doing. Now go ahead and connect the lines of my two, two inches to create my color. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'll come down to the color stand. I'll come down to my color stand here. I'm going to mark 1.5 inch in. Okay. I'm going to mark 1.5 inch in from that opening. Here, I'll go in by 1.5 on the color stand because I want to connect this to my color, but then there's a particular shape I want to create. And this is going to help me create that shape. Please watch. Now move up to my color itself the line of my color i'll move up and i'll mark half an inch okay 0 0.5 inch upwards from that opening here i'll just go up now i'm just going to connect the 0 0.5 inch to the 1.5 like this you see a slant line and then i'll blend back that half inch back into the color i'll just blend it back into the color and you guys this is it okay this is how i was able to create my cut together color please let me know if this was very very simple for you to follow because me watching this and me doing the voiceover <laughs> i just realized that the step was even more simpler than i even thought that it was going to be like it is really simple once you follow exactly what i did okay you'll be able to create a color stand and a color for yourself so before we cut out, we need to confirm the measurement because there is a measurement we're working with and I am working with 7.85, which is my 15 divided by 15.75 divided by two. So I realized that I got more than I was working with and I need this to be accurate to what I have on my shirt neckline. Okay. Because I'm attaching this color to that point on my shirt and I need everything to be accurate. So I would adjust. Okay. Like I said, there's always room for adjustment. So I'm just going to adjust. So this is the SS. I will adjust it back to get exactly what I have on my shirt. Okay. So I'll adjust it back. And this side is no longer needed. This part is, is the SS. So please make sure you confirm your measurements on your pattern before you start cutting on your fabric. Okay. This is very, very important because you're going to be attaching the color or the color stand to your shirt and you need all points to sit accurately okay and now you can go ahead and cut out once you're done confirming now please watch how i am cutting out my color stand and my color act of this whole equation okay 
take your time. If you're a beginner, in fact, you're supposed to be <laughs> watching and pausing and taking notes. Like you're supposed to be watching, pause, take notes, write down some few points of yours that you have learned and then continue watching because you need to understand this and not just know it. Okay. So this is my color, my color stand. I'll open this up so you see what it looks like. So if I open this up, I have 15.75 as the length or the width. And then I have every other thing sitting well. So let's go ahead and cut this on the fabric and sew. Um, this is my fabric. I will go ahead and iron this. I have two fabrics here and please make sure you have two fabrics just like me. And I made sure that the fabrics I cut out is bigger than my color pattern. Okay. My color and my color stand pattern. I made sure that this fabric here is wider and longer because we need allowance around the color when we're sewing. Okay. Now I'll go ahead and place my interface or my interfacing on the fabric like this. And then I'll iron this down. So you can see I'm just showing you that make sure you have allowance everywhere. Okay. Make sure you have so much allowance everywhere. Okay. And make sure that your glue parts, if you're using interfacing, make sure that your glue parts is the what you're placing on the wrong side of one of your fabrics. Okay. And then iron. But if you created yours on a pattern, go ahead and um, duplicate this on your interfacing and now place your interfacing on your fabric okay and iron just the same way as i am doing now i'm gonna trim off some of the fabrics because this is really too much <laughs> i just wanted you guys to have like a lot of allowance you know beginners tend to make mistakes so yeah, I just want you to know that you need allowance and now you can trim off and at least leave one inch round all or half an inch round your fabric, okay? So now that is done, we are going to pin this together, okay? Because now we have to go sew and remember we have two fabrics here and one is laying underneath this particular fabric that you're looking at and we need to sew on both fabrics. Now we can go sew. And when you're sewing, please make sure you sew on the lines. Okay? Make sure you sew on the lines. Very, very close to the interfacing. Okay? You see? Follow the shape of your interfacing when you're sewing. Now you see where I am sewing. I'm sewing pretty, pretty close to my interfacing and i'm just following the shape okay you see how i am you know navigating taking my time to twist and turn and you know i started feeling like i could wrap okay so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to trim out again some of the ss and this time around we're going to be trimming out a lot of the ss <laughs> so make sure at the base of your collar you know, where you have the actual um, width of your collar, make sure you leave like half an inch when you're trimming. But every other part, trim up a lot. Okay, trim a whole goddamn lot. Now, look at what I'm doing. I'm practically cutting out so much fabrics from every other side, leaving only half an inch at the base of the collar, okay, where we're going to be attaching to the shirts. So, every other place get a cut and half an inch on the base now the next thing i'm going to do is on the part of the fabric that has the interfacing i am ironing in the half an inch i have on the base here i am you know pressing it backwards like taking back the fabrics and making sure that i am using the interfacing as my guideline so i'll push the fabric in and i'll make sure that i feel the interfacing before then i iron the fabric i don't know if you get I'm just trying to make sure that I take in every fabric and I make sure that what I have is the actual shape of my collar and my collar stand, the actual shape that we drafted out. So the next thing I'm doing is just flipping this to the right side. That's to the good side. If you have 
um, any tool to make sure you get out the sharp points, please do. I try using my scissors. I try using a lot of things and I realized that I couldn't bring all the fabrics out. So if you really want a sharp edge on your collar, make sure you use something really um, long and tiny that can just pierce through that hole and bring out those fabrics, okay? And then go ahead and iron, okay? This is very necessary. Iron so that every point on your collar and your collar stand lays really flat, okay? Take your time to do this particular process this particular process here needs time because this is where you get your finishing if you're someone that is really interested in getting clean finishing and you know everything looking on point on this part here you take your time okay okay so the next thing i'm going to do is you see the half an inch i ironed before it fell off so i'm going to iron it again this time around and i'll use my hemming gum to hold it down okay this is something i learned and since I have learned this on the streets of sewing, it has been like one of the greatest trick ever. Okay. It helps me, you know, get all my folded edges sleeping well. And then when I go sew, I sew exactly on where I need to sew. So if you're a beginner, I think you should learn this. Okay. A sewing trick are very important on your sewing journey. <laughs> So I'll go ahead and iron and this time around, I am very sure that this particular folded edge is never going to fall out. And this is what it looks like. Now we need to iron this two down. Okay, so you make sure when you fold, all the lengths are equal. Okay. And I'm going to also do the same thing I did. Use my hemming gum to hold this down. So that it doesn't just fall out when I am sewing. And we're going to be attaching the collar now to the shirt. So this is what I have once I was doing, doing everything I needed to do on the collar. And it is time for me to attach it to my shirt. So if you followed exactly what I did, you should have like the same thing your collar has on the width as what you have on the shirt. Okay. And I'm just telling you that, you know, your interfacing should be the one sitting on the good side of your fabric. Okay. The good side should have the interfacing side. And where the wrong side of your fabric should have the other part of your fabric that does not have the interfacing. And now you can go ahead and place your shirt in between your collar. But before you do that, we need the middle points, okay? So you find out the middle points on your shirt. That is what I'm doing. Finding out the middle points on my neckline. I'll use my scissors to create a notch. And the middle point, of course, is going to be sitting on my back, okay? So... Here is the back and here is the middle point. And for my collar to get the middle point, I'm just going to fold it into two equal parts and I'll use my hot iron to iron this down. And this will automatically create a middle line on the back of the collar. Okay, here is the back and that's the middle point. And here is my middle point on my shirt. So I'll make sure both middle points sit together because this is how you can create your collar and attach it to your shirt and get an accurate sitting. And once I do that, now I can top stitch my shirt and my collar together. Okay. So you place your shirt or your neckline in between your collar and you top stitch. And that is it. That is how to create a collar and attach it to your shirt. Now, I hope you were able to learn one or two from this video. If you're a beginner, let me know in the comment section if this video was really helpful. Thank you guys for watching. And this is the end of the shirt. Um, so you know how to sew a shirt and you know get everything right. I love you guys so much. So I'll be seeing you on my next video. Love and light to you, my babies. Bye.